Welcome to Advent Prayer for Tuesday the 8th of December. My name's Curly Hamlin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do, forgive us our sins. Heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O God, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Hallelujah. The words of this hymn are, are so beautiful. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your rock watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. Our Father, that we, uh, what, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son. And Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Today's psalm is Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulphur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice, and upright men, upright men will see his face. So Lord, we just reflect on your word now. Father, we thank you for your love for us, your righteousness, and your desire that none shall be lost, because you are a just God and a merciful God. Amen. So today's um, reading from the New Testament is from John 1, verses 6 to 8. And the reading comes with a passage from Tim Chester's book, um, The One True Light. So we have the reading followed by Tim Chester's reflection. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, but came only as a witness to the light. One Sunday I was talking to one of the mums in our congregation I'd been preaching and she was thanking me for my sermon. Suddenly her four-year-old son piped up. It's not all about you, Tim. It's not all about you is one of the catchphrases we often use in our church. With every issue and in every situation, what really matters to God is, his, is, is God and his glory. It's a phrase we use to regain perspective. Presumably my young friend had picked up on this and was now ready to deploy it as well. 
There was a man sent by God. Sounds at first like it could be introducing the word made flesh. But no, this man is someone else. And it's not all about you, or it's not all about me. Might well have been one of Jesus' catchphrases. Verse 6 could be translated more literally as a man came from God whose name was John. The verb is the same as that used in verse 3, which is literally, through the word, all things came into existence. Without him, nothing came into existence that has come into existence. <laughs> John came, but John didn't come, at least not in the same way. Instead, everything else came through Jesus, including John. It's true that John came first in history. He was six months older than Jesus and he started his ministry before Jesus went public. But Jesus is the source of John, just as Jesus is the source of everything that exists. This is how John himself puts it, saying, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. We meet this idea of the superiority of Jesus in verses 7 to 8. John is a witness to the light. That's a tremendous privilege. John plays a key role in the history of the salvation. Of salvation. But Jesus is the light to whom John witnesses. It may be that John the Evangelist, that is the writer of the Gospel, had followers of John the Baptist in mind when he wrote these words. Perhaps he wanted to persuade them that truly following John actually means following the one to whom John was a witness. But it's also a reminder that like John, we're secondary and Jesus is primary. It's not all about you. Just in case you think I'm doing John a disservice, this was his message. John himself said, I baptise with water, but among you stands one who, who, who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Later in this chapter, we read the story of two people who, who are John's disciples. What does John do with these disciples? He points them to Jesus so that they leave John and follow Jesus instead. We so easily become preoccupied with our own status in situations of conflict, in social situations, in our careers, in our church meetings. We can make it all about us. We can manoeuvre to promote ourselves or contribute to further our interests. In these moments, we need to tell ourselves, Jesus must become greater, I must become less. Personally, I don't shout and stamp my feet. That's not my style. Instead, I go away and brood, although sulk might be a more accurate term. I feel misunderstood or mistreated. More times than I can count, I've got in a stew about a situation of conflict, and it makes me miserable. Every time that sets me free is this thought, it's not all about you, Tim. You must decrease so that Jesus must increase. When this truth finally dawns on me, often the conflict suddenly doesn't seem to matter anymore. Only a witness. That's how John is described in chapter 1, verse 8. And that's a good description of you and of me. What makes us special is that we are witnesses to the light. John came so that through him, John, all might believe in Jesus. Only a witness, but gloriously, never less than a witness. May it be said of you that through your witness, people have found life in the name of Jesus. So Father, we just meditate. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us rest, find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, 
joy of every longing heart. Our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare the way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. And at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Father, we thank you that Advent is such a reminder of your first coming to this earth. Help us to prepare our hearts, Lord, not just for this season of rem remembering your first coming, but prepare our hearts for your second coming, to know that what we're experiencing now is just the birth pangs of your return. Father, we just praise you and thank you that you have everything in control. You are on your throne, as the psalm said. You are in charge. And Lord, again, we just give you back any control we've taken, any fears we've adopted, because we don't understand that this is all part of your glorious plan for your second coming. Father, we give you all the glory that you have as a na as a blessed this nation. And Lord, we do repent where we have gone so far astray and kept away from your word and your truth because we thought we were right in our own eyes. Father, help us to see things through your eyes, through your mercy, your forgiveness, your justice, your wisdom, your compassion. And Lord, in this Advent season, where we're reminded of a couple who had to travel so far into a distant place to be registered and to give birth to their child in the most uncomfortable and humble of circumstances. Help us to give thanks for what we have and to share what we have with others. Help us to remember how simple that first Christmas was and to rejoice in the simplicity of so many things this year that actually we've had to pause and we've had to reflect and we've had to do things differently. Lord, help us to take those disciplines with us into next year. Help us not to be resentful of missing out or fearful of missing out. But Lord, have, to have, have joy in the things that we've taken up, more time with you, more time with family. And Lord, for those in our congregation who are suffering in any way, financially, psychologically, physically, mentally, Lord, Father, we pray your blessing and your mercy and your, your abundance for them. So Lord, we just come again and just gather around your crib and just are reminded of how you became flesh and how you are willing to live a very simple life so that you could direct us to your heavenly dad. Lord, we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. 
And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Bless you.